Welcome everyone. Today we'll be presenting on the enumeration of automorphism orbits of graphlets. My name is Galen Salis, and I'll be starting off by talking about the mathematical concepts, and then Dylan Fossil will take over and talk about applications. I've broken the mathematical topics into two parts. The first is about mathematical foundations of automorphism orbits and graphlets, and the second is about their enumeration. Here's a conceptual overview that starts at the top and progresses downward. I'd like to start with explaining graphlets, so in order to do that, we'll need the concepts of subgraphs, induced subgraphs, and connected graphs, and graph isomorphism. From there, we'll go from the concept of graph isomorphism to graph automorphism, to automorphism orbits of graphs, and then tie it all together with automorphism orbits of graphlets. Graphs are made of a collection of vertices and a collection of edges. You can think of edges as pairs of vertices. The example on the left is a simple graph whose vertices are labeled and on the right we have an adjacency matrix for that same graph. Each entry in the adjacency matrix indicates whether a pair of vertices are connected, and in simple graphs nodes are never adjacent to themselves. Both of these representations tell us about the structure of a graph, which is sometimes called its topology or topological structure. Connected graphs have the property that each pair of vertices, adjacent or not, have at least one path between them. In the examples below, the left graph is connected, but the right graph is not connected. A subgraph is intuitively a piece of a graph. I like to think of it procedurally by selecting vertices and then taking some of the edges between them. The left graph in the example is the original graph, and the one on the right has a subgraph selected in red. An induced subgraph is a subgraph where we have to select all the edges that connect the vertices that we selected. Graph isomorphism is an interesting and challenging concept. Essentially, it has to do with two graphs having an equivalent structure, even if the vertices are labeled or placed differently. The two graphs in the example here have similar structures, and yet they're labeled and drawn differently. To be a little more technical for the sake of clarity, an isomorphism is an invertible function that maps the vertices of one graph to another in such a way that if two vertices are adjacent in the domain of the function, then they'll also be adjacent in the image of the function. From the previous example, we can see that there are six different isomorphisms between the two graphs, and therefore isomorphisms are not necessarily unique. We are now ready to define the concept of a graphlet. A graphlet is a graph that is small, connected, as well as an induced subgraph, and they are considered distinct from each other when they are non-isomorphic. From left to right, the examples here are the singlet, barbell, wedge, and triangle graphlets. We have now gone from the concept of graphs to graphlets, and here we turn back to graph automorphism in order to understand automorphism orbits of graphlets. A graph automorphism is an isomorphism between a graph and itself. In this example, we see that the automorphisms are not unique, and that the specific pairs of nodes can be swapped for others while preserving the structure. An automorphism orbit of a graph is a collection of vertices that have a structurally equivalent position in a graph. This example is a graph colored to illustrate the distinct orbits and we can see that the vertices 3 and 5 in magenta are part of the same orbit while the other vertices are in their own orbits. Since graphlets themselves are graphs, we can have an automorphism orbit of graphlets just as we can have an automorphism orbit of graphs more generally. The examples are again the singlet, barbell, wedge, and triangle graphlets, but this time colored by their orbits. We have now completed all the concepts of part 1, and we'll now move on to part 2. In part 2, we will start with enumeration and something called GOM, and then conclude with extensions of simple graphlets. Enumeration in this context is simply counting how many times each node of our original graph participates in each automorphism orbit from each graphlet under consideration. This enumeration provides a quantitative description of the structure of a graph. The GOM, or graphlet orbit matrix, is essentially a table where the rows are the nodes, and the columns are the orbits from the graphlet automorphisms, and the entries are the corresponding counts. You can think of each row as a distribution of orbits for a node, and each column as a distribution of nodes for an orbit. This matrix is the starting point for many types of analysis. Everything that I've covered so far has been in terms of simple graphs, 
However, we can repeat the entire thought process with different types of graphs. This diagram shows us how different types of graphs result in different numbers of graphlets of a given size that provide different kinds of information about a graph. In the top left corner, we have the familiar undirected graphlets. In the top right, we have directed graphlets that distinguish asymmetric relations. And at the bottom, we have signed graphlets that distinguish between relations that are in some sense positive or negative. In conclusion of my part of this presentation, the take-home points are that enumeration of automorphism orbits of graphlets allows us to describe and quantify graph structure, and that using different types of graphs will allow us to represent different types of data. That's all from me, and now I'm going to pass you on to Dylan, who will get into an application of the concepts I've equipped you with.